Alrighty, Lumberjacks, welcome back. Uh, today I just wanted to show you guys something uh, kind of cool that I did with my own joysticks out of my own joy for customization. Uh, so recently I put out that video where I was uh, working in a real-life processor running a South Star processing head, uh, during which I learned about a new control type I'd never seen before, which was called the Dan Foss style controls, which are um, basically a control type where you have a joystick with buttons on top, and then you have the the buttons on the sides that you use your uh, the rest of your fingers for. So there's less buttons on top, and it's more kind of where your um, where your grip is of your your fingers. So inspired by that, I switched all my controls over on one of my processors um, and customized it so it'd be identical to that. But I kept running into the problems of not having a lot of the controls that were on it. So um, I decided I wanted to kind of try to build my own. Uh, Dan Foss style control. So what, I don't have a video of this. Um, I just took a bunch of pictures because when I was doing it, it was it would would have been a pain in the butt trying to take video. So I just have a slideshow here. So uh, to start things off, um, I went online and I found this build your own USB uh, button arcade set thing that you can get. So if you go on Amazon, you can actually find these um, button kits for making your own USB arcade joysticks, and it comes with a whole pile of buttons. So the set I bought was like $50 Canadian, and uh, it came with two full sets of buttons. It came with a lot of buttons. There's like 12 or 13 buttons and a joystick and all this other stuff. But honestly, I just needed two buttons for each joystick. Uh, so I just used that, connected them up with the little circuit board here, and then it's just a USB out. Um, <clears throat> I went to our local hardware store, and I found these plastic pieces here. Uh, and what these are is they're, I think they're just an electrical conduit or like a junction box of some kind. Um, but they're very thin and very tiny little pieces. So I kind of measured it out and eyeballed it and figured that would be the right size. Uh, so as we continue, um, so then I took these little plastic round pieces come with these USB buttons like the kit. So I took these and I just basically used the outline with a felt marker and outline the center and the um, outside edge of the circle of where I needed to make cuts. Because inside these jun junction boxes are just uh, hollow, but we need to put the buttons mounted on them to uh, continue the experiment. So like I said on uh, the last one there, the insides are just hollow, so you can pop the screws off these sides, and then you have these panels. Um, so then what I did was, well, and then this was the concept here just to show um, how the buttons would fit in there, the wiring comes out the bottom of the conduit, uh, and so on. So first thing I needed to do on my Thrustmaster was I needed to remove this rubber guard that was on here. So if you pop off the outside part of the guard, there's a screw that goes through the middle. Um, you just undo that and you can pop off this rubber guard um, to get rid of that. So the idea was to mount it kind of on the side of where that rubber guard sits. Uh, to match where the buttons are, similar to how a real-life Dan Foss-style setup is. Um, on my right trigger, my right trigger actually died a few weeks ago because I've been slamming it so much from uh, processing, using it as my cut originally, that the trigger actually stopped functioning finally. I mean, it's, it, it held out really well. I got almost two and a bit years out of it. Um, and then the trigger's finally given up because of how much abuse I've given it. So what I was showing here was there's a little pin inside the joystick um, and then I just use the tack with a little hammer and you can actually nail that pin out. It is a real bugger to get that pin out of there. Um, like I had to really slam on it really hard. So be careful if you're doing that. Um, in the end, this part was actually stuck out too much, this black piece. So without the trigger being there, I just ended up removing it. So I just used a pair of pliers and I slowly chipped away and busted off, uh, the tip of it. So then it basically had nothing there. Uh, I filed this down later. I know it looks really ugly. A lot of the pictures you'll see are really ugly, kind of gnarly cuts. Um, later on, I went back and filed them all down so they were nice and smooth. But yeah, I just basically removed that entire trigger off that side because it's kind of in the way of where I want to hit my buttons. So that's gone entirely. Um, then on those junction boxes, I made these little cuts. Again, these are horrible cuts. I ended up filing them down a little bit nicer and smoother. But um, just wanted to show you guys where I was starting to make the cuts. Um, because this was the section that was going to have the zap strap through it so that you can actually connect it to the joystick handle. Um, and as you can see, that was kind of the plan. So this is where the little notch is, right where the, the piece goes through. This is just to stop it from sliding up and down. Um, and then I just uh, attached it on here. Now, hopefully there's some better engineers out there other than me because I'm terrible when it comes to connecting things to things that don't have connection already. 
Uh, so I just made this to kind of hold it firmly, and then I ended up using electrical tape to kind of hold the uh, fasten the top and bottom. But I mean, if you were really experimental, there is a screw hole straight through this uh, joystick, so I'm sure you could actually probably run a screw all the way through it or do some kind of weird uh, connection with a bolt maybe to do a better job. Um, for me, this was enough. I mean, it holds it on just well, and uh, with the electrical tape, it actually made it perfect. So again, here's that shot from the notch view, so you can kind of see what I was up to. Again, that holds it just from sliding up and down on your joystick while you're working with it. Um, I then cut out these. Uh, these are these are some nasty cuts because um, I didn't have a drill bit, obviously, that big to cut out a drill. So what I ended up doing was doing the largest drill bit, which was about a half inch, and then... Um, I just used a Dremel and really nastily grinded it out. Um, I had to do it in kind of a weird spot, so the holes did not go perfectly round, so <laughs> that's just the way that was. But with the lip that's on these USB buttons, you know, even if the hole's not perfect, that lip covers it up, so they actually turn out pretty nice. Um, and once you get it through that hole, this plastic guard basically just cinches up so it stays tight against that button. And then in the end, like I said, because of that huge... Uh, coverage of that circle um, it actually covers up the nasty hole quite well so it looks really really good uh, in the end so that's two uh, two of these connected and then on the back like I said you can see this white piece you just turn that kind of like a screw uh, and it tightens it against here so that there's tension on both sides <clears throat> so there's both of them connected up just to kind of show what they look like and it worked out really good for that uh, there's the full panel. So this is I just wanted to show how the wiring would go out So I put the two on here and then I ran the wires out the bottom of the conduit So you just kind of have an easy one It's important to make sure that the bottom faces down so that it actually hooks up properly and then um, This is what I meant. So you'd want to put the zap strap across the middle first and then through these little spots and wrap it around the back uh, prior to uh, closing this off because if you put this down you know, your, your, your little cuts don't really work. If you put the, um, the zap strap around all the way around the edge, it would have to have be on the inside. So that worked out pretty good. Um, and then I was just kind of lining it up to show where it would go. Uh, again, this button's kind of gnarly. I cleaned that up later. But you can see where the trigger sticking out here was just too much in the way to hit those buttons. Uh, and then I kind of zap strapped it on there just to show what it looks like. And then the conduit pieces ran out the bottom here. Um, this was this is the USB panel now the biggest problem I ran into was there's not a lot of room on these cords Like I wish they were like another little bit longer uh, So I have to mount the USB uh, Chipboard panel with the with the uh, USB out really close to the joystick So I actually just mounted it <clears throat> with some sticky sticky tape square stuff for now I'll maybe I'll get something better later, but <clears throat> I use sticky tape uh, to hold down this panel, I wrapped it up with some electrical tape just to keep it safe from getting chipped or smashed. Um, it's in a little safe spot. Uh, what I would like to do eventually is get like a plastic case to put that in with, and then just cut a little section out just to protect it a little bit better because I don't like having the open uh, chipboard laying around for something to fall on it and break it. But for the most part right now, it's working fine, so I just have it tucked away in there. Um, and then I think this is the last one. Yeah, so this was the final result. I had it... Uh, hooked on with the USB piece or with the uh, zap strap piece and then on my left trigger I actually kept the trigger because I use this left trigger as my cut now and then I use these two buttons as my um, Raise and lower the processor head and then on the right the two buttons uh, open and close the um, Roller arms just like the real-life machines now again on the real-life Dan Foss things There's four buttons on some of them or three buttons on some of them And they're much smaller than these giant buttons, but unfortunately I couldn't find a USB kit that had smaller buttons This was the best I could find um, but Operating it it feels very similar to when I first got in that processor. It's a little weird to get get the hang of it, but um yeah, I actually really liked it. Now, the biggest trick on using these compared to the joysticks before is your grip. Uh, your grip's a little bit different, and I found this even working in the processor myself. Um, when we're operating with these guys, normally uh, you have, like, your full grip around the joystick, but in the Dan Foss style, they have a box sticking off the side. So even in that processor when I was working uh, in real life, I found it really difficult to get a good grip on the joystick while you're operating without hitting a button 
Like it was really tricky to kind of move it. So in the end, you almost you end up using kind of the meaty part of the bottom of your hand. Like if you were to do kind of a karate chop, that meaty part of the bottom of your hand. And it fits, well, obviously perfectly in this little sling of this. And you almost end up controlling the whole um, movement of the machine just with your karate chopping hands. And your fingers just kind of sit freely. So what I was used to was gripping the whole joystick and using my thumbs to kind of navigate. But um, I found it's actually a lot easier if you, you learn and train yourself to use kind of your karate chopping hands to direct where you're going. You develop a little bit more muscle strength and dexterity doing that as well. And then your hands are just free to hit whatever buttons you want. So there's no tension on your fingers, which is really nice as well. But uh, yeah, it's not absolutely not the most perfect project in the world. Uh, but for what I had, I'm really impressed with the way it worked out. And uh, I'm slowly getting a lot better at processing now. So if I were to go back and hop in a machine, which uh, apparently might be the plan here eventually, um, it'll be a lot easier for me to adapt to the controls because I'll be working with those controls now. Um, this is kind of an advanced project for somebody if you really want to do it. It's not necessary. All of the FDR machines run fine without having all this extra accessories, but I always like to push the envelope myself a little bit and have a little bit of fun with it. And uh, yeah, I, I've, I've been having a blast. I find myself processing a lot faster now that I'm not just using my thumbs to run around. I have a lot of free fingers that are being used for um, making sure all the cuts and stuff are happening proper and the roller arms open at the same time. And it's pretty darn cool. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have any video of it right now. But um, as the Operator Review series uh, continues on, you guys will start to see me using them for processors. Uh, from the web cameras on the top of the chair, so you'll get to see a little bit more. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. It was kind of a neat little project, and maybe it'll inspire you guys to do something cool. So anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.